Hello there once again fellow train fans and welcome to another Run 8 Train Simulator video. The CSX Fitzgerald sub has released. This has been a many, many, many year project in the works uh, from high rail simulations of course noted and uh, definitely welcomed uh, developer for Run 8 um, and Kind of shortly on the heels of Waycross and the CSX A-Line, and all three of these now combine hundreds and hundreds of miles of mainline running with a ton of industry, a ton of yards, you know, locals, all kinds of stuff all throughout. The Southeast is like the new hot stuff in Run 8 as far as I'm concerned. It, it looks on another level. Uh, the operation is on another level, and some of the detail alone is on another level as well. Uh, but this is now available. I will, of course, link it down below where you can go and find it as usual. But it is Waycross. So Waycross is the last route that High Rail did uh, shortly after the CSX A-Line. Uh, but this new one goes from Waycross, that massive, massive yard, to Manchester, Georgia, which is uh, just south of Atlanta. Uh, a little ways it's this route alone by itself is 200 plus miles and uh i think it's essentially controlled by the jacksonville division or jd as it is on uh you know official railroad things it's going to be a single main line with numerous numerous sidings and spurs uh and the csx manchester sub continues north where this one ends uh essentially but there's there's apparently over a dozen defect detectors in real life so we should be picking those up uh on the route and as it stands modern day uh we see coal grain uh auto racks uh intermodals manifests at uh, about 30 trains a day which isn't too shabby now i do know that he and by he i mean jason at, at high rail primarily the developer uh, set this in the early 2000s, if I am not 110% mistaken. So it, it's, I think it's a little before pre-PSR uh, type stuff. So, I mean, you could do whatever the heck you want on it. It's run eight. Do what you want to do. But I think it's set uh, pre-2000 era. But uh, the line is a very interesting and very important line. So it obviously goes from Jacksonville, and then it goes to Manchester. And then from Manchester, you can turn north and go to Atlanta, or keep on going, which will go into Birmingham, uh, Alabama, and then on to Nashville, and then Chicago. So they essentially call this the Southeastern Corridor to Chicago. So it's the main line from, uh, from the Midwest uh, down to the, the port of Florida in Georgia, right there on the, uh, the border on uh, St. John's Bay and all that. But, uh, yeah, let's have a look. So we are at the yard of the namesake of the route. I'm not going to be running very many trains on this route. This is essentially what I always like to try and do is cover the route as a whole, operations, and just, uh, you know, checking out the general vicinity and all that good stuff. Uh, if you're looking for straight train action, this probably is not for you. Like I said, I'm going to be looking at the route, uh, operations that can be done within and all that good stuff there's a, a train spawning up there so a little bit about this route and what it is so the history uh basically is the waycross airline road as it was called and uh the airline what they meant by that was a direct route it was chartered in 1887 when this all began uh between waycross and sesums which is a little town to our left that eventually extended to Fitzgerald, which is where we are now in the name of the subdivision. And uh, eventually the railroad was named Atlantic Birmingham Railroad. Uh, they, of course, purchased more local roads because back in those days there were just a ton of little railroads all over the place, naturally. Uh, so they, they purchased some more stuff. They then named it, um, geez, what did they name it? The Atlantic and Birmingham Railway. So they just named it Railway instead of Railroad. Uh, but it changed hands and names multiple times uh, and was eventually absorbed into the beloved Chessie system. And then, of course, CSX in uh, the late 80s. But this all started, This uh, you know, what this main line is today uh, from Chicago to Jacksonville. This all started, this little bit right here anyway, 
was all about lumber transportation. A lot of hardwoods, uh, essentially pine in this region, and that's what it was all about when, uh, when this all got started here. So we begin uh, just north of Waycross, and we got a train going uh, what they would call west, uh, headed north out of Waycross right now, right off the bat. So those of you familiar with Waycross, this is where this line is going to meet, and then where you can then go in uh, Waycross Yard. Uh, where are we going? There we go. That's the way I want to go. And then this way goes right into Waycross. And then, of course, if you were to keep going that way, that would go to Thomasville Sub, uh, straight down uh, the, the edge of uh, South Florida. But a lot of things were updated overall. So what's kind of cool about this whole deal is even if you have no interest in the Fitzgerald Sub and you don't plan on purchasing it, uh, High Rail Simulations now has a patch that fixes a lot of things and adds some new things to the, the excuse me, Mr. Cow, to the southeast region as a whole, namely brand new track textures. Uh, so the tracks, the ties themselves, ballast and all that, which looks absolutely incredible. Uh, best in run eight right now, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there were a ton of signal fixes. Uh, we've got many block options now for controlled sidings. If you need to get your training to a controlled siding, uh, it of course is Fitzgerald subdivision compatible. Uh, and there were scenery updates to Moncrief Yard in Jacksonville and the Auto Train Yard, which is in Sanford, Florida, down way at the, the almost very end of the A-line, um, you know, down south into, uh, into Florida, which, uh, you know, a, a lot of good updates, whether you, de you know, plan on getting a Fitzgerald sub or not. Uh, the route is $40, as is a lot of stuff with, in, you know, run eight as far as routes go. But, uh, you know, you got a lot of operational miles. And with the high rail stuff, you know, as far as I've been using Run 8, uh, the high rail stuff has been top of my list. It may have something to do with me being a southeastern boy uh, through and through to begin with. But uh, not only that. So there are new signals as well. We've got some new lovely uh, searchlights and vaders. And Jason was given access to Jointed Rail, which I'm sure a lot of you might know, uh, in their loft and library of assets as far as buildings and uh, other things of that nature. So those are now dotted all throughout the route. Uh, new and old, fits and current. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you know JR from trains and you know working with uh, Searchlight Simulations for Train Simulator Classic. And they make all kinds of great stuff. They got a lot of really talented developers working for them. Uh, and so they were they were able to to grant uh, Jason use of a lot of the uh, the loft assets and whatever the technical term is. So we got a lot of really good looking new stuff in here as well. One of the first notable things you will come across is Kettle Creek. So this is just north of Waycross. This is the same train we saw pass a moment ago. It's obviously a uh, a daily manifest or Q train or whatever they call them now. And uh, this is trucking north. Or west and then next up back to back I must say was very very well done uh, I believe this is supposed to be the Satilla River which uh, is the Satilla River but locals Satilla it is what it is uh, and it looks really good the way he did the big sandy curve in the bank uh, dependent upon the flow and height of the river uh, that looks good. That's a that's a new technique, uh, and that looks really, really fine. I noticed that right off the bat. And, of course, the bridge looks very nice, and it's all clean as well. And you'll notice, you know, this is uh, this is southeast uh, Georgia and, and Florida, and you will most definitely notice the uh, geography and the flora change. Uh, every mile you go in this route, which I can't, I can't honestly say there's, there's anything else like that, uh, in run eight. I mean, there's a little bit of it, you know, with, with places like, uh, Tehachapi and, uh, maybe the Roseville sub and stuff like that. But this, this is, uh, this really, really changes. Some other things you'll start noticing right off the bat, like what I was talking about with the asset loft and things like that are these, uh, 
uh, electrical boxes or junction boxes or defect detector boxes. I think most, if not all of them, are new. You can tell this and the crispiness of this thing are on another level for Run 8. You know, I, I do think a lot of things for Run 8 look really good because it's on a, a totally different scale. It's more of a life-size scale. So for things to start looking like this, we are in business. There's, you know, there's a lot uh, to look forward to as far as things to come out for Run 8 and uh, just what's been done alone so far that I've seen on the Fitzgerald sub alone. We, of course, still have the old school uh, whistle boards. I love these things to death. I wish I had one to stick on my wall behind me, but I'm ever searching for memorabilia and all that good stuff. But another thing is to note uh, is the grade profile. So you're probably thinking, you know, coastal plain, southeast Georgia, Florida, it's relatively flat. For the most part, yes, but it is fairly, fairly hilly. Uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of washes and indentions in the earth that, you know, everything has uh, been made from, for you know, from bodies of water, rivers, creeks, all that good stuff, flowing water uh, over time and, and farming practices because this is a huge agricultural area uh, for the country and abroad uh, internationally. But anyway, I'm getting beyond the point. It's, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. As you can see right here, this is actually going downhill. Uh, don't let your eyes deceive you. Um, and then going back around the other way, uh, you can see it just drops off right there. We got the uh, mile post boards as well, which look very, very nice. Let's get up. So it's kind of a crest right here, another whistle board. And then look, this son of a gun just literally drops and cuts to the right almost immediately. And then it's, uh, it's downhill as well. And here comes that train that uh, we've kind of been chasing. You can think of it like that coming out of Waycross, headed up to uh, Manchester. But, um, yeah, it's it's going to be hilly. Be on your toes operating the trains on this. It's not going to be easy. Look at these uh, level crossings as well, which still look very, very good. They, of course, have high rail simulations on there. And uh, I love the reflective tape look on those. Those look very nice as well as the cross bucks. Good stuff. All right, we can't let the train catch us. We got to go. So we're turned back looking uh, east, and I think this is the old line to Brunswick, an old defunct line. It's just nothing there but the bed now or rail trail or whatever the hell it is now, but it's not there anymore as far as I know. Uh, but it was the old line that went to Brunswick, which is in Georgia on the coast as well. Big port city, a uh, nice little city right there on the coast in the marsh and the low country and all that. But uh, Sesums, the first town, should be up the road here behind us. So we're down the road a little ways. we got that train behind us, and I think it might get pushed into the siding. Either that or the one coming south is going to get pushed into the siding because they should be meeting here uh, probably long after I'm done talking with this little bit. But my beloved, and another one of the new things uh, to the southeast and the high rail simulation stuff is the double D bungalow or a junction box or electrical box or whatever the hell these are new as well and they look fantastic even a little light bit on the side here in the glass like this this is next level for run eight the way this model looks and uh, the shading on it and the textures and all that like that looks very very nice so it's all kinds of new stuff like that um, not to mention the signals i think the signals were touched up as well some of them they are different uh, along this part of the route. These are the uh, search lights, and they do look damn good. All right, let's keep going. And I, I, I keep going up the line and keep getting sidetracked. I just wanted to take a look at this. You can obviously tell the difference now between the main line and the first siding. So this is just outside of Sesums uh, still, if I'm not mistaken. We've obviously got the newer concrete ties, which they are putting all over the southeast now, uh, including in, in my home territory here, which is uh, FEC. But uh, these things are starting to be everywhere. You can see the older ones there on the north of the screen, the old wooden ties. But look how nice that new ballast texture looks. The shading on the ties themselves, the tracks, the track clips, all of it. Well, there's kind of track clips there. They're not 3D, but they're there. They're there. Just believe they're there and they will be there. But yeah, that looks very nice. And of course, 
we are uh, we are heading west in Georgia, and what's in Georgia if not but a absolute ton of pine trees? You've got these little yearlings. Uh, these look probably more like they're about ten year, eight, ten years old, something like that. But this, a lot of Georgia and North Florida is pine trees, and uh, he is. He's got that. He knows what he's doing scenery-wise, and you can already kind of tell as well the scenery is changing from uh, extreme southeast uh, Georgia. Also as well, again, as I was mentioning, the track or up and down uh, porpoise uh, or sawtooth profile of the line, you can tell right here. This literally looks like some old-school roller coaster. It is down, up, down, up. And it, it changes. It's just it's this crazy looking ribbon of steel that just goes up and down. And it does this most of the line until you get up in the Piedmont area, which is like, you know, off the coastal plain, which is where we are now, close to the Appalachian, uh, where the Appalachians start, or the uh, the Great Smokies, if you will. And uh, then it's a lot more mountainous, uh, and the grades will be uh gapped out larger if you will whereas down here it's just real quick uh up down up down up down once again we are still just outside of sesums i've been sidetracked again we got these old telegraph poles and look at the way they're placed you know the railroad just never got around to taking them down got some old ones sitting around here they've weathered so many storms uh that hit this area and just the way these things are placed just look awesome as well little Little details like that. Just love it. Love it. Love it. The Foamers Airbnb in southeastern Georgia at Bolin is now available for $1,000 a night. Anyway, yeah. Bad humor aside. This is uh, one of the crossings. This is Bolin. There's a nice old building over there which looks very indicative and representative to the area. Uh, I don't know if this building is new. It certainly looks a little bit sharper. If it's not, it has definitely been touched up, possibly. It looks very nice compared to some of the older stuff. And I feel like a lot of these ginormous weeds are new as well, which were added in. And stuff like this, yes, 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 yes. This stuff fits in so, so well. And then we've got this other bungalow. Look at this thing. This, this could be the picture... This could be the thumbnail for the Fitzgerald sub. This defect detector bungalow. Look at the glory of the thing. I'm sorry to sit here and just absolutely drool over it, but it looks amazing. The shading on the thing, the texturing. And again, this is run eight. You know, run eight. I, you know, I got to let that sink in. You can see the old uh, SEL sticker on there. Of course, it's got the bowling stenciled on there. It just looks really freaking good really really good metal roof even look at the weathering on top of this roof oh my gosh my gosh my gosh to uh to foam out over railroad infrastructure is another level i'll tell you but it's worth it we got uh we got some other bits here of course a little electrical box over here the dragon equipment deals right here with the little pads uh which of course if something touches it completes the circuit and uh, hot box or hot axle or whatever detectors on there. Just this, this little, this little area right here has just got me, uh, it's got me all riled up. That looks very nice. Speak of the devil, I literally stopped recording, and here comes something at Bowling. Ugh, I missed the defect detector. I heard it because the train was so darn loud. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to try and catch another one. But, uh, hail, yeah, yeah. Here we go again. Something different. I'm not maybe two miles down from where I just was at the bowling crossing uh, or, or uh, control point or whatever they'll there. But uh, this here is, again, something that's just just really stands out to me it looks incredible this just absolute wall of trees this canyon of trees on either side looking straight down and it might be hard to see whether you're watching you know on your computer mobile phone whatever but the profile just looking straight down it is literally up and down up and down up and down up and down it's insane and I just came across this little scene here so we're we're still trucking uh, westbound and this is just an old 
old farm that's probably been out here a hundred years and this looks almost like a scene out of american truck simulator i shite thy not uh this looks very good though got some dirt road down here and as you'll notice this is more florida north florida dirt road looking stuff that will change that will very much change still a lot of pine trees got the pond over there for irrigation and you know letting the cows get a drink of water and all that good stuff Got some nice uh, barbed wire over here with the painted tips on top. Maybe the old ranch house back there in the back, who knows. But there's an old barn over here which just immediately stuck out. Got some cattle back here chilling in the shade. This old barn model, again, that looks very, very nice. I don't know if that's from uh, High Rail themselves or, or part of some of the loft that jointed rail uh, offered up to them but even this little shack over here as well and this looks like an old homestead down here like i you know i i'm a southern boy I've, I've grown up down here most of my natural life living between tallahassee savannah and orlando in this general vicinity and it's like this this just looks i don't know it just looks immediately like something you'd see taking some little back road in this area you know anywhere around here you've got several different homes couple of mobile homes you know some of them may be trashed out or paid off and so they get a new one and that's probably the old house right there and grandma and grandpa live in there and the the crazy kitties live over in that one or something who knows but even this thing too look at the metal sheeting on that roof my goodness just this little little scenes like this just little ranch here Goodness gracious, we've got so much to go. Uh, this is a little town by the name of, is this Nichols or Douglas? There's so many tiny little towns. But uh, I just wanted to showcase this train coming because it is still just up, down, up, down, all around. But uh, the little old downtown itself looks really, really good. It's just old, you know, one horse type town. Not even a street light in this town. It's so small. Got houses all up and down the side of the railroad. And again, a lot of these buildings look very nice. Like this friggin' warehouse right here looks very, very good. This building over here, we've got the old shops over this way as well. The highway running through town. Big old pile of ballast or gravel or whatever the heck. We'll watch this train come up over here. Well, that's obviously an intermodal headed on down to Jacksonville. If you gotta go, you gotta go. It's uh, it's you know nature calling all that good stuff. But we got you a nice little uh, nice little pooper for you over here in case you need it uh i think that's new i don't remember seeing those before i may be terribly wrong but there's a siding here you know so if uh if you're on board and somebody had some some microwave fish from the day before and you don't want to go in the nose uh and you're sitting here waiting a while you got you another option right there Another cool thing I'm just seeing, so this, again, uh, you know, the southeast as a whole, but uh, mainly southern Georgia uh, as well, uh, huge agricultural industry, and this is obviously a, uh, a another farm of some sort with, uh, I'm assuming oranges, they look like, uh, they look like oranges, but they may be supposed to be apples or something like that, uh, who knows, but just little things like that. Um, which are uh, very nice as well. Little nurseries dotted all up and down the map. That's like the second one I've seen so far, so I figured I'd stop and uh, take a look at it. We are in it now, Georgia. That is uh, big old pine trees all around, and as you can see, the road and the trackside scenery is Georgia red clay. And uh, 
it can be very red looking, but in some parts closer to Florida still, it's, you know, it can be kind of a pinkish color, which this most definitely is, and it looks very, very nice. Uh, we've also got, I thought this was a bird for some reason, but little things like this, little extra pieces of rail. We got ties laying everywhere, you know, from uh, track replacement and stuff like that. But good night if, you know, the time of day that it is right now on this map and, and the shadows being long shadows being cast from the trees down through here. If this is just sitting the prettiest part of this route that I've seen yet. But we got another bungalow down here and the nice cross bucks as well. Mile post 624, this is Saginaw, stenciled on there as well, got the, uh, oh this one's not SCL, so they are different, one to one, which is pretty cool, I don't think I see another light on this one as well, so they are different, it's not the same little bungalow over and over, which is uh, pretty darn cool. Alrighty, welcome to Douglas, Georgia, guys. One of the first uh, fairly good-sized towns along the run up north to Manchester. Uh, there's a couple of things here. Um, it's, you know, it's it's South Georgia, so again, a lot of agriculture, feed, seed, fertilizer, all that good stuff. Uh, there's an old spur up there just to the right of that old water tower, which says Douglas on it and looks very darn nice, by the way, uh, which uh, I think it's the little spur up there to the right. Uh, I think it's a, a fertilizer company. Got some tank cars there as well. Uh, let's see. There should be some other stuff around here if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, what else? What else? I'm not sure what this is. Um, hmm. It does look very, very nice back in there. There's something you can do. Uh, I honestly don't know what this one is. I tried turning on the rail the industry tags and i didn't see anything pop up uh it may be something on my end um that uh, i'm not doing quite right but uh another thing is like look at this tractor trailer <sighs> that don't look like an old school run eight model to me that thing looks really darn nice and uh yeah another thing i'd like to go over really quickly is the grass textures so when i first installed the the route uh yesterday Things immediately looked very blurry to me, and I was immensely sad because I was so much looking forward to the Fitzgerald sub in Run 8. And there was just something funky going on. And uh, I, I was told that things were done in a manner for perfectly good reasons uh, for making the, the, the terrain or texture kind of blur at a closer distance. And that is precisely for what you see here so these like jagged cuttings in the uh, the earth itself or geography uh, it softens those a bit because they can be quite pronounced in a lot of run eight uh, maps and it, it lessens the grid or patterning effect uh, now still I am not super duper crazy about this this overall texture because I feel like like there's a good example right dead smack middle of the screen uh, they just kind of fade into nothingness, um, you know, but the textures themselves do look very good because uh, this area's got just a lot of, you know, weed, uh, wire grass, you know, clovers, all that kind of stuff. And it does look very nice mixed in with the gravel and uh, all that other stuff like that. But long story short, TLDR. I ended up having to uninstall my AMD graphics driver, and I uh, reinstalled a old WHQL graphics driver. I deleted my shader cache, fired it back up, and uh, it just looked a little bit better for me as far as like the texture blurring. But it is definitely there, and it's there for a reason. Uh, some people notice it, some people didn't. You know, to each their own. Everybody plays on different spec computers and monitors and things like that. But uh, after, you know, after I redid my uh, graphics card driver, it looked a lot, a lot better uh, for some reason. So something was going on there. But, uh, yeah, this is Douglas. Sorry for the little rant there. Just wanted to get that across just in case, you know, some of you may think it might kind of look a little fuzzy or blurry at a distance as well. At least get on down here. Yeah, I'm not sure... What the heck this is? 
I'm pretty sure it's just a feed and seed or, or fertilizer doohickey. This little area here, which is pretty cool right off town. You got you a couple of tracks to switch as well because there are, not only is that industry over there, which I'm not sure what that is, uh, but there's another one up there that's Vulcan Materials and Aggregates. And this is a good time as any to go ahead and take a look at what comes with the route if you purchase said route. Um, this is the locals, and then this is the actual... Uh, track diagram that you can look through for yourself. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Obviously, it'll just take forever. Uh, tells you the the mile post, you know, between Manchester, Lionville, Fitzgerald, Oglethorpe. Uh, it's got the different yards, all that good stuff on there. Uh, shows you what's what. Uh, overpasses, level crossing, rail lubes, <laughs> culvert, wash. Uh, yes, I giggled when I said lube. I am a child. Uh, but it's got everything you need to know about the the profile and diagram of the route itself. And it's chungus. You got a lot to look at there. It's got the, you know, the the yard diagrams as well. So you'll be good to go. This is all about your locals. Uh, so it says here, 8, 723, 724 are way freight. that do set outs and pickups between Waycross and Manchester. So that's the whole length of the run. A724 runs north to Manchester, setting out any customer cars for Douglas, which is where we're currently at. Ambrose, Fitzgerald, Cordell, uh, Oglethorpe, Rupert. Charing, Junction City, Woodland. It's fighting a burp there, sorry. Uh, Manchester uh, and uh, A720. And we got all kinds of stuff here. I'm not seeing these tags. For whatever reason, I need to uh, check something out. But again, it's got, you know, he's provided you with everything you need to know as far as the, uh, the locals in this uh, general quadrant and uh, vicinity. So let me get rid of that out of the way real quick yeah I'm putting the let's see it's control control f8 I'm not showing industry tags I got them on let me make sure oh wrong key wrong key yeah they're not popping up I'm probably doing something wrong there's there's still so much to learn uh, with run 8 because it's you know I'm, I'm still a baby taking baby steps in run 8 compared to a lot of others but uh, this little station right here, this stand looks very nice with the little gangway walking over there. That looks good as hell. That's got to be new, too. These, of course, are the new tank cars, which came with, uh, I'm pretty sure the new tank cars which came with that latest uh, rail car pack, which introduced PBR, which just made them look so much more real-er, um, which is uh, very, very cool. Love these old buildings like this as well. That looks super cool. Got your more modern stuff in the background there. Probably a Wawa or a, uh, a Speedway or something like that. We got an Auto Zone. Very cool. So we've got actual branded uh, things in this somehow, which is very cool to see. Ups the realism factor a lot. A lot, a lot. And then, of course, the Douglas Water Tower with the decal on there. Established 1895. Which, uh, again, that looks really damn good. I like it. Downtown Douglas running through there. And these signal towers, man. Dang, those are sharp as well. Very, very sharp. Very sharp. Newish uh, whistleboard and crossing right there, too. All right, let's go. Fred's little something something right here so we're just to the west of Douglas the little town we were just in and I believe this is Vulcan uh, construction aggregate so I'm sure they're around when this route was supposed to be placed which again uh, for those that didn't catch it the first time it's supposed to be circa 2000 ish uh, but you know crushed stone sand all that good stuff construction building materials but I think that's what this is uh, I don't know how much this is actually used. It's it's most likely trucked nowadays, but you can use it if you want. That is for damn sure because the uh, infrastructure is here. We got the old line here, and then I feel like there's a line that runs back here in case the train needs to pull back, obviously, and then get back out on the line. So you got that. That is Vulcan Materials. And again, I'm not seeing the tags for some darn reason. Industry tags on. They're not popping up for me. All right, let's go. Okay, I saw this and immediately got kind of geeked. So 
Georgia is very well known for their peanuts. Who doesn't love a big old stunken sack of boiled peanuts? I know I sure do. But this is premium peanut, uh, which is most definitely here. Jason from High Rail does not put this stuff here. You know, he doesn't just pull it out of his butt and, and plop it down, so to speak. These things are real. These things exist. And he has got the actual logo of the company, which is on there as well. And uh, Premium Peanut, you know, big, very big peanut game with these people. This is the largest single shelling facility in the world, or it was at the time a couple of years ago. So if you're uh, if you're crazy about peanuts, this is all for you. Got the uh, the dumper right down there, a couple of extra sidings or one extra siding back in there. This warehouse looks nice with the uh, open vented windows. Of course, they truck a lot of stuff in, and uh, you know truck it back out. And I think the things that they need to process or whatever the hell uh, may be used from the rail cars. But the facility pretty much looks like this, and it's got these you know farm to factory carts here. I don't know the exact name of these suckers, but these things are in here as well. So it's cool to see those. Uh, all over the place and then of course some tractor trailers and it's a little forklift action that's a dang good looking forklift i uh i operate a forklift on my day to day so f five stars on the forklift <laughs> looks looks really good i like the forklift all right that's premium peanut just on what would be considered the north side of douglas and this gets you back on to the main line here all right some of you might find it weird or morbid or whatever the hell it is a bit odd i guess you could say but this is a nice little old old timey southern church out in the middle of bfe uh at some crossing with uh some nice looking headstone models i'm telling you this is next level this this is new stuff to run eight this looks very good we've got some extra ties laying right along the uh, track here as you often see got your uh, tornado magnets back there big ass weeds everywhere this this looks good scenery jason at high rails got an eye for it another really cool looking little place so this is just about on uh, outside a little town called ambrose which is west of douglas the fairly large town that we were just in and uh judging by the look of it i think this is supposed to be um geez what's it called Palk and griffin or something like that which is a fertilizer supplier uh there should be a big chicken facility around here as well called pilgrim's po uh, pride which uh, i know should be here it was there back in the day it's very much here because it's, it's one of those big industries that these towns uh survive upon but uh, I'm going to go with the, the fertilizer, just judging by the tanks and the types of cars that are here. But again, looks very good. Uh, these, these new freaking silos, those look very nice. Add a pop of color. These look very nice as well. Got a pretty good size yard back in here. One, two, three, four, five extra tracks. So you can do some work back in there. And there's grass growing over it, which always looks awesome. I love me some grassy tracks. I'm a grassy track man. Hashtag grassy tracks. Um, all right, let's go. And just like this scene shows, it's not all pine trees and grass and weeds and all that. There's fields. It's it's farming. A lot of farming in uh, this part of Georgia. Just big, wide open uh, swaths of land that you'll go through like this. We got an old disused spur here, what would appear to be. This is farm belt, feed, and supply. It's even got the store hours on there, just in case you were wondering. And again, again the buildings look really good. The uh, the storage tanks there. Just the, the general ground, uh, the way the, the ground meshes into the, the red clay, and then the grass, and then it just all looks very nice. Little scenes like this, I can't imagine how long they take to, to perfect we are just outside of Fitzgerald. Again, the namesake of the routes. Uh, about a third of the way up the route, I would say, so far right outside of Fitzgerald. Uh, but this is what I'm assuming is Southern Veneer Products, which is a, a you know a wood product company. Uh, 
the veneer, plywood, manufacturing, pretty much anything that, that goes hand in hand with that. We got a couple of wood chip guns there, which look very nice, and these piles of wood that would have come, you know, straight straight off the land would have been chopped down and shoved right back in the back of a truck just like you see here very nice love the scene that's depicted here we got the scale over here that's very cool fairbanks scales nice 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 got a little elevator over here got a little ambient sound coming out of there which is always nice <laughs> that's awesome it damn sure is southern veneer products says it right tooting there on the side of the warehouse that is very very cool so uh i believe the way this company is is it's spread out over several acres uh, along the line here and in this town just outside of fitzgerald and yeah, because if i'm not mistaken this is another portion of southern veneer right here maybe we'll see something painted on the side I could be very much totally wrong, although I do see some wood back there. So, yeah, this is also just a secondary part of uh, Southern Veneer. I think this is the sawmill. I think it's called the Nest Fraser uh, Sawmill, this area right here. But it's a wood chip, center beam, all that good stuff could go on through here. So you got quite a lot you could do through here. Not sure what the heck this is. Uh, looks like some kind of cleanup from an old spur industry there. Let's keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. Oh, here it is, guys. Here it is. This is VLS. So this is probably one of the biggest things that uh, you're going to be able to do work-wise on, on the line itself. Uh, so VLS is VLS Environment Solutions, which is like a real car uh, cleaning and compliance uh, company. Just gets gets real cars up to snuff how they should be, you know, per our very lovely, you know, regulations, service transportation board and all that fun stuff. So there are separate areas within VLS that handle tanks or box cars or hoppers. This one over here is obviously tanks. Um, oh, this is very cool building looks nice as well is that a new building oh hot diggity dog he's actually got it on there as well so yes this is vls that is exactly what it is and what it says and this is not it no they've got quite a few tracks in the back here so we got a lot of storage back here and then there's a couple tracks that run around back here as well so there's a lot to be doing around here at VLS, taking, uh, you know, freshly freshly clean cars back to, you know, whatever termini they uh, are to and fro. This over here is Polar Beverage and AOK -okay Bottling. Uh, they bottle a lot of uh, soft drinks and things like that. Uh, let's let's see, like Snapple, a and Root Beer, uh, Fiji Water, the fancy stuff, Arizona Iced Tea, which I could go for right now. Matter of fact, it's been so damn hot here lately. Uh, but yeah, it's a, a bottling company. I thought they got tank cars because I thought they use chemicals to uh, process their drinks. And then the drinks, of course, get shipped out tractor trailer, not train. Train, train bring in the raw uh, materials needed uh, for all that. But again, this looks very good. And I'm, I'm almost 99% certain that's what it should be. I don't see anything on the building as far as a name. But uh, not everything's got a big old placard on the side of a building saying what it is. But uh, that's very darn cool. A lot of stuff to do in Fitzy. Fitzy Fitz. Another uh, feed supply bit right here. You can chuck a couple box cars on there. Keep on trucking. Some more big fields. These look, uh, these look very nice. Very nice. Farm country. Ooh, what's this? What's this? Wait a minute. Hold up. Foamer beverages. <laughs> uh, something tells me this is not a real company, but it's funny as hell. Um, this Maybe this is supposed to be polar beverages. This Yeah, I could be totally wrong. That up there was not it. Or maybe they got like two locations or something. Um, okay, yeah, maybe this is the, the bottling and package doodad. Because these look like the uh, platforms that would serve uh, tank cars. 
these over here don't look like they're done. These storage tanks, they look like they're missing a texture or something. Yeah, those, those don't look quite right, uh, all things considered. All right, let's keep going. It's Gerald, here we come. I think this is the 17 Mile River. Yeah, they, they didn't pull out any stops naming this one. Um, yeah, but I think that's the 17 Mile River there. Got a speed board coming in here, 25. Deepity do. Pretty good sized town, Fitzgerald. You'll see a little spur over here as we get closer in. A good sized power station yonder. Here we go. This crosses over the road. We got another Fred's. Uh, we don't have those where I live. So it's a fun one for me. Nice old church. This goes way back here. What is this? Um, just spawning a train. Lots of crossings back in here. All right, so I cut out a bunch of unnecessary uh, camera panning. This is what's at the end of this line. This very much is still here to this very day. I'm assuming it was 20 years ago. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is called Modern Dispersion South, which is like plastic pellet resin manufacturing. Use pellet hoppers, all that good stuff. You can see some pellet hoppers right there. So, of course, Jason and High Rail knows what he's doing there. This is a, uh, a fairly busy facility. They got plenty of tracks, plenty of room. To move cars around uh it does look very nice there should be another track up here to the left if i'm not losing my marbles yeah i don't here it is i don't know if this is part of it uh this might be something to, uh, there we go johnstone whatever the heck that is i don't know if this is here anymore if i'm entirely honest uh it might have been then these look like something that would definitely serve uh tanks or uh, some sort of hopper or something like that. So that's back there as well. And then it's just, this is a, a, a pretty good little spur. This is almost like, think of it like the DeLand spur from the A-Line, but much, much longer. Uh, and it goes through town here, of course. We've got a Ford dealership. I got a Ford. Another nice little cemetery right there with a fence around it. Looks very old-timey. Got a Ross dress for less. All up in that mess in a crystal. Crystal is a staple of uh, southern fast food, most specifically uh, Georgia fast food. And I can put me down some little crystal burgers uh, once in a blue moon, but I wouldn't want to be in the same vicinity as me uh, the following hours. But yeah, good, good little, good little snack there. Crystals, they're everywhere. In uh, Georgia, this keeps on going. We got a Piggly Wiggly up there, and damn, if that model there doesn't look good as well, that looks very, very nice. Uh, got a gas station right here, McDonald's over there, Mickey D's. What the hell is this here? Napa. We got Napa and Auto Zone. Take your pick, dealer's choice. Uh, something back here that I don't know what. Some kind of probably some kind of scrap metal deal. Like that place, uh, which is also on the Deland Spur, and there's also something at Pecan Yard near Palatka on the A-Line that does some scrapping. Uh, lots and lots of crossings, so if you're a horny boy like me, you'll be in hog heaven, hogger heaven, uh, hitting that uh, noisemaker on the console, and this will get you right back up to the main line here. And there we be. This is Fitz Gerald. Uh, funny town with an equally funny story. So Fitzgerald is known for its chickens. It's got a huge wild population of chickens within the town and borough of Fitzgerald. And of course we got the water tower there, which looks damn good. And it says Fitzgerald on it as well. Um, so funny thing, several years back, a mayor was elected and for whatever reason, said mayor thought it would be a great idea to build a gigantic wire-framed chicken. And that he did at the expense of the local tax, county and city payers dollars. And they were not happy, and let's just say he wasn't mayor much longer after that. So Fitzgerald has got this giant chicken, the largest in the world. It's the weirdest damn thing. Um, 
gosh, how high is it? I want to say it's like 60, 70 feet. It's supposed to be like a little bed and breakfast or Airbnb. You can sleep in it. And he thought it would draw a crowd. You'd be able to see it from the interstate and the highway. You just try and get tourism because sadly these little towns just die when the interstate passes them by. Um, you know, same same deal in Florida. A lot of towns like that as well. Uh, it I don't see it. Um, <laughs> it would have been funny if it was here. But uh, that would have been a custom job making the, the goofy giant chicken. But as far as the way the town looks, this looks pretty damn spot on if you look at some stuff of Fitzgerald. Up here, there should be an old train station or a depot. There she blows right there. This, of course, is not Needles, California. That's just a reused asset, uh, hopefully just for now. He'll, Jason will do a lot of stuff like that. From what I've seen with Waycross in the uh, CSXA line, it's kind of placeholder and then put something there later. Um, but this is an old uh, depot, Fitzgerald Depot, which is a, now it's like a Civil War museum or something like that. But it was an old depot for the Atlanta, Birmingham and Atlantic uh, Railway, and it was built turn of the 20th century. Uh, there is an Atlantic Coastline caboose that sits here on the property. Um, and let's see. I think that's about all I can uh, think of here. Yeah. It's, there's no caboose here. It would have been cool to see a little bit of trackage laid there with a caboose there, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. It would have been nice, though. Um, got an overpass right now, and we should be getting up to where we started the video out in Fitzgerald Yard. And here it is. This is Fitzgerald Yard. This is the namesake of the route. The office is right up here. Uh, complete with a couple signs I saw when I first started. That's how I know they're over here. Check this one out first. Fitzgerald Yard, CSX is high velocity terminal. Safe, proud, and prepper red. Fitzgerald subdivision. Zero accidents and injuries. 100% rules, compliance, 100% of the time. Be the best of the best. This will say here. Ah, I think it says the same. This pretty much looks like this. This is what it looks like. He's got a lot of employee cars just sitting around here. Got the uh, radio tower, a couple of bits of stuff over here, some crossing arms, old signal head, just stuff. Very cool. This makes things seem so much more organic and alive. A couple of paint barrels, or there's probably nails or something. That, what do they put in there? Nails? Or uh, spikes? Yeah, spikes. It says spikes on there. That's pretty cool. Some stacks of ties, some rail stuff like that. Uh, and this is the yard over here. This is uh, Fitzgerald, the namesake of uh, of the route. This building over here, this is an old building. I think this used to be the engine shops or something uh, over here. I don't think they use it anymore. And there is a, there's sort of like a balloon that runs around. Here it is. Yep, you got that in there as well. So there's like a run around you can do uh, at the edge of the, the yard if a train needs to get around or whatever the heck if they got the yard full up or they're doing work in there or whatever the hell it goes all the way around big loop oh and he's got some stuff sitting back here as well might be like the maintenance way headquarters or something back here got an old uh, container sitting there a bunch of rail ties all that good stuff very nice man <laughs> He, uh, he, he's got an eye for detail. I tell you what, this stuff looks really darn good. Uh, I'm not sure what this is here. Uh, shoot, I don't know if this got something to do with the railroad or not. Maybe some kind of like transload deal. Honestly, didn't know this was back here. I thought I knew this area fairly well. Yeah, I don't know what this is. But it's uh, stuff you can do. It might be more part of the uh, railroad just infrastructure uh you know maintenance away crew stuff like that oh and hell look at these oh nice i don't believe i've seen those before got those uh middle of the road marker deals that's cool as hell a lot of time so if the arm's going down you got some dickhead sitting here and don't want to wait for a train you know who'll try and just go around well these will kind of help you know you'd be able to drive over them but your your paint job won't last through it most likely uh, and reflectors. So that's cool. I don't think I've seen those before. That might be new as well. All right, let's keep on headed west. Here we have another lovely little water crossing. I think this is the Alapaha um, 
river here, if I'm not mistaken, but it looks very good. The way, you know, just the way he's, he, could, he just could have done terrain and water and been done with it, but no, he's got plants down in there because it's, you know, a lot of this stuff in the south is going to be extremely overgrown a lot of the time, very swampy, so that looks hella good. Good night. Look at this scene. We are not far from uh, Cordell. I think this town may be called Rebecca. Is this Rebecca, Georgia? Got another feed and supply building over there. There's actually a little spur back there to the right as well where you can do some work, turn around, move cars, do whatever you need to do. But there's obviously a, uh, a feed, fertilizer, whatever the heck deal going on here complete with the hoppers which looks this just yes this just yes this looks very very nice old downtown this is the row of buildings that's that's all there is the street lamps look very nice as well those if my eyes do not deceive myself are new as well which look very nice and ornate uh hell yeah this looks very good got post office back here i'm looking for a name i think this town's called rebecca What's this back here? Look at this. What's the old torn down motel or something back there? Just look at that. That's cool. Little little extra scenes down the road you might see. You know, it might be hard to see in the cab of a train, but you know, I kind of I kind of dig stuff like this. I know some people are just all about the trains, don't care about the scenery. You're not going to be high in the air looking around. That's fine. You do you. What do we got here? E.L. Landon Hunting and Fishing Supplies. Yeah, this looks good. This is a nice little looking uh, thoroughfare here. Very nice. We are not very far from Cordell, which to me is probably going to be... Oh, look at that. He's even got a Highway 90 board on there. And I see this uh, Buckle Up Georgia sign. That's so awesome, man. You know, to, to most people watching this, what the hell is this guy getting so excited for? I get it. These things are in Georgia. That's that's cool. Just little details like that. They just, they kick it up a notch. They kick it up a notch. Very much so. We'll keep on scooting down. You can see how the tracks just literally go up and down, up and down, up and down. Pass a lot of hardwood and, uh, Pine, flatwood, whatever forests, a lot of farmland, a lot of swampage. Uh, very odd tree. Maybe that's like some 700-year oak tree right there or something. We got a nice level cross in there. Yeah, probably big paper industry deal around here. Some nice signals as well. As usual, sitting there. And I'll save you all the zooming and we'll get on up to uh, Cordell. So we're just outside of Cordell now, around this curve. Uh, I believe this is Interstate 75 that you go under. You're, of course, not going to go over the top of the interstate. And this is the main uh, north-south thoroughfare. Uh, it goes between, ah, uh, geez, all the way down to almost Orlando uh, at the Turnpike up to uh, Atlanta, of course, and beyond. This place right here, I think I said Drexel Chemical back in, uh, geez, like Douglas or something or Fitzgerald, but I think this is actually Drexel Chemical. Uh, this is still just outside of uh, Cordell, and again, a lot of these new assets are looking fancy AF. I like that. No fumar, or you go boom boom. Uh, so yeah, chemicals. <laughs> I could make a, <laughs> I could make a Norfolk Southern joke, but I won't, cause it ain't no joke for the people that live to where that happened. But yeah, chemicals and fires and things absolutely do not mix. All right, let's go to Cordell. We'll get there. Now, I'd also like to point out I have passed very many of spurs and industries as well. Uh, some of them I flat don't know what they are. Uh, so if you get it, they're for you to find out. Um, but we're still just outside of Cordell. Cordell's probably the largest town uh, that's going to be on this this bit of trackage uh, on the uh, CSX Fitzgerald sub. But there's something else right here. Uh, Union Compress Warehouse. Looks like uh, steel, which is very cool. Get to use these bulkhead flat cars because I do love me some bulkhead flat cars. Uh, and uh, run some steel. So that looks damn good there as well. 
I can see a Waffle House in the background, smothered, covered, and chunk of did, chunk of uh, pilot gas station, truck stop, that's obviously legit, I love these real uh, things around here, I do see this bungalow, um, that's obviously not supposed to be like that, it's missing a texture, uh, I'm sure within you know, a week, maybe less, there's going to be patches to fix little things like that. That's the first, well, I take that back. That's the second thing that I've seen that doesn't look like it was completed. On the grand scale of everything I've seen so far, that is but a drop in a very big-ass bucket. Um, let's get a little bit higher here. I thought I saw something else. I swear I saw another crystal. There it is, <laughs> yeah. Another crystal. And that road back there, I was wrong. That was not I-75. This is I-75. Uh, dual motorway, just like that. Dual tracks underneath. This is I-75. That's excellent. That's excellent. Again, this is another billboard that very much exists down here. This is, you know, again, for some, you know, why is this guy, like, getting his pants in a twist about billboards and signs and stuff? It's like, you know, if you've been down here or you're from here, you know, it's just one of those things, and that is a very realistic billboard, uh, which is pretty cool. Got an Operation Lifesaver billboard there. Damn cool. Are there anything on the signs? Hot diggity dog. There sure is. Abbeville and Cordell. That's cool as hell, man. Central Georgia Fair, Cordell, Georgia, October 25th to the 29th. See, like, you're not even going to see this stuff, and it's there. You know what I mean? You really got no business being over here in, you know, in the grand scheme of things for what Run 8 is, right? But that's just little details like that, man. Cool as hell. Pachak's Fleet Service. Trucker. ATS. Uh, Fomer Energy Drink. I remember Jason showing these off on uh, his Facebook page. We, of course, got another Chris Dow. And, yeah, that's I-75. I don't know what that road was back yonder that uh, had the overpass couple of couple of big big dingus stores here i'm assuming that's probably a walmart the taj mahal of cordell walmart keep on going and uh yeah we're there guys we're in cordell that's that's the heart of georgia railroad yonder there uh i believe there's like an airstrip back here somewhere i thought this was supposed to be it for a minute or the airport so this is uh, CSX trackage right here. And then that over there is Heart of Georgia. And it's about to get a lot more funky. Uh, this, this is probably, I think I said it already, this is probably going to be the coolest part of the map for me anyway. This, this is up there. I don't want to say Folkestone because that's the funnel. But this is up there. You know, I'd say this is shortly under Folkestone for the region anyway because there's a lot of different stuff that comes through here. Um, and you got a little heritage railroad that's over here to the right, which, uh, this, these buildings over here may be the ones to represent that next to their yard there, uh, which use Heart of Georgia Railroad engines and stock and, uh, run trains several miles through the countryside, uh, and they run through some beautiful land and, uh, it's just a, a nice little heritage railroad. I've not ridden it. I'd like to get up there and ride it one day. That'd be cool as hell. So again... Right side, CSX. Left side, Hog Hoggers. Which, by the way, I'd also like to plug uh, my man Dex from, uh, gosh, what is it called? DCS uh, Paints for Run 8. Uh, go check out their website. I think he just released the Heart of Georgia GP40-2. And as much as I hate Genesee and Wyoming, they look damn good. And they they're he made them for this. So you, now you got some Heart of Georgia engines to throw on here as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, definitely looks like Cordell. CSX has got some extra trackage if they need it down in here. That's fancy. The circular bumpers around that. I don't know if that's new to uh, to this. Greenstone Camp and Supply. That's the big man. J-Dogs Camp and Supply. The big run eight dude. Buttery Jack, Jack in the Box. I don't know if we got Jack in the Boxes around here. That might be from a mod anyway, uh, if I'm not totally uh, bugging out. And this is the first I'm seeing it. So I remember seeing in-work uh, progresses 
progress shots of the area. This is uh, kudzu, and it is all over central, uh, western Georgia, northern Georgia. I don't remember the story exactly. Kudzu is funny. It's from like Japan or China or some place in Asia. I know those are two totally different countries. Yes, that sounded idiotic. Uh, but they were brought over here to help uh, strengthen soil back when we were just beating the crap out of the soil, uh, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s, to reinforce things. And it just absolutely took over kudzu. And so it's every damn where now. It's in North Florida. Uh, it's, it's all over the place. So you're going to see a lot of kudzu. So that's cool that he threw that in here as well. A lot of stuff, uh, core deal. It's a really cool place. So it's not here, sadly, because, again, this was circa 2000 when he made this route. There's actually a rail fan park here. So they, you know, they they took aim on, on rail fan dollars. Why not? And gave them a nice, safe place to uh, enjoy the trains without being massive dinguses. And there's a, a big platform here. And I think Virtual Rail Fan even had a camera here for a while, or they still do. And it's a very nice looking place. Uh, it's rather new, uh, last couple of years, if I'm not mistaken. And it sits right here. So you've got, you know, Norfolk Southern, which runs uh, north and south there. And then you've got Heart of Georgia, which is that far track there. And then you've got CSX, which is right here. So you can see a lot of damn action through here. Um, so that stinks that it's not here. But it is what it is, because, you know, Folkestone is there on the, on the Waycross and A-Line routes and uh something else that's interesting about this area is this uh this tall looking tower deal over here looks almost looks like a castle uh turret uh that is real that is definitely there and it definitely looks like that that is the uh, original water tower for cordell georgia which is like over god i think it's probably 120 years old now and it's just one of those things they've been trying to save because i think there's one or two of them that still remain in georgia or the area or whatever the heck um, and it's just, uh, you know, it's just a neat old piece of history. Bird's eye view of Cordial, Georgia. We'll try and go over this a little bit just in case there's anybody out there a little confused about, uh, this whole intersecting of all these crazy tracks. So this north and south, that is the Norfolk Southern line. That is the, uh... Gosh, I think it's called the Macon District. So that's the Norfolk Southern Macon District. That goes as the crow flies pretty much north and south. The track that looks like it goes uh, west that way, obviously, and east that way, that is the Fitzgerald Sub, the namesake of the route that we're currently taking a look at. And there's, uh, mamma mia, one, two, three, four, five diamonds. Is that right? Five diamonds in the small area right there is where the uh, rail fan park should be and then the the hog or heart of georgia which is uh Genesee, wyoming uh owned runs this little bit uh across here kind of sideways so think of it like uh northeast and southwest and so just to show uh my meaning here so the sam short line is what the little heritage road is called uh i said it right there that's obviously not the correct uh, setup because we don't have the old uh, Pullmans that they got that they get a hold of but the actual uh, station um, Sam short line building or whatever is that one there I think or one of these right here it's right where this line kind of bows out there so heart of Georgia actually uses their engines to uh, pull those trains and it keeps going on uh, east that way naturally of course so I put a Norfolk Southern random train there uh just as well just to show like it's heading south the signals look absolutely fantastic these vaders very appropriate uh vadery looking which are cool looking signals uh those look nice those might actually be brand spanking new i think Got a big substation over here, which all these little bits look very new as well. I don't think I've ever seen this in Run 8 before. Uh, all a lot of new stuff. You know, just big mounds of gravel just laying everywhere. Weeds, trees, bushes. Uh, still got your mile markers. Your loose ties hanging everywhere. 
Uh, that continues on down against the, uh, the Macon District there. Uh, there's several places around here. The heart of Georgia serves as well. Got some extra bits of track laying there. And, of course, downtown Old Cordell uh, as well. Now, this is looking east, uh, just beyond the Five Diamonds, uh, just directly ahead. Uh, several little industries here. I'm assuming these are all CSX served. Uh, I know the hog serves some to and fro. Um, geez, what could these be? It's It's got to be some kind of agricultural. I know there's a company over here called uh, Nutrient Ag Solutions, which is uh, seed and fertilizer. That might actually be the other direction, but there's definitely a lot of stuff right here to do, which this little industry, industry, that sounded weird, this in. <laughs> Industry Rail Park uh, definitely looks good, though. So this is now facing west. We are back on the east side of Core Deal here. You can just see the uh, Sam Short line there down the track. This is about as far as the line goes. There are a lot of little industries the hog serves in this area. Uh, so they definitely do work around here. But a little bit about Core Deal itself. It is the self-proclaimed watermelon capital of the world and again today mid-february we're touching 90s down here uh watermelon sounds absolutely delicious it was incorporated the town of cordial in 1888 and uh essentially named after the daughter of the savannah uh americas and montgomery railways uh president so his daughter uh so it's 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 got railroad ties kind of it's named after his daughter somehow um but uh what's what else is neat about the area is this served as the temporary capital of georgia for the confederacy during the end of the civil war uh in this you know general vicinity which i don't think a lot of people know little neat you know morsels of history like that always uh intrigue me and of course uh, at the junction of two major railroads at the time, as of course it still is today. Uh, you could say three, but still definitely two. This here is another little industry uh, headed west or north, actually, railroad term. Just around that big curve there where trains uh, slow down to cross the Diamonds uh, in downtown Cordell. Uh, I think this is Southland Wood Products. And there's also a, uh, a lumber company or sawmill here as well. I think it's called Griffin. Uh, but there's quite a bit to do. And again, this little industry looks very, very nice. New assets, new buildings. They all look very fresh and spicy. I love the way all this uh, stacked lumber is laying around here. Uh, the track should go back in here quite a ways. You got another truck entrance there with scales and all that good stuff. Let's see, there's a little spur there so they can load them up on uh, flat cars or whatever the heck. Some more stuff over there. Hot dog it is! Southern Veneer Products. So it's actually the same company. So they've got a couple facilities. Uh, how about them apples? I didn't realize that. I thought it was a different company. Maybe they ended up buying it out. But these tracks back here are uh, as needed, I think. Uh, they're quite grown over. That one is there at least. And then this one goes back to, uh, I'm assuming, some sort of aggregate or, uh, or whatnot. But uh, this place is fairly large as well. Goes back quite a ways. Let's see if we got a name. FPP Propania. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's exactly what it is. These are CMAX towers, but I wouldn't take that for face value. That's probably from old SoCal stuff on... Uh, so Cal, run eight. But that sun is setting. Uh, we got to hurry. So let's get back out on the main. So that place back there, I was wrong. I actually looked it up. I think it is, now it is anyway, called Reamer Concrete Company. So aggregate concrete. Uh, this right here is, geez, this is either the peanut place or uh, Helena Industries, which is another uh, chemical manufacturing place. I'm going to judge by the truck there. It's possibly peanut, especially with these storage tanks as well. Um, I can't really tell, but it's a, just another little industry siding. And it, of course, has the fantastic doll arm. One of my most favoritist ever uh, signals, um, you know, eastern seaboard, south. There used to be... 
quite a few on the Tallahassee, well, the now defunct Tallahassee subdivision. Um, I think they've since gotten rid of most of them, but uh, it's cool seeing stuff like this. And the, the model itself does look very faithful, as well as this ground signal. That looks nice as well. So these are definitely dumpers. You can see the grate down in there. So uh, they definitely bring stuff in and not ship out. I'm assuming this is the peanut deal because these look like peanut farm fields and all that right there, even though they probably have nothing to do with the place. But uh, let's see if I can find a tag or name on the building. I don't see anything. So yeah, okay, looks like we got something else up here. We've got quite a few more uh, facilities up here. This might be the uh, chemical place I was talking about here, actually. This place is quite friggin' large. Holy cow. Holy cow. Okay, there's a lot of stuff to do here. Which place is this? Now I'm drawing a ginormous blank. It definitely looks like chemicals. Um, cheese and crackers. This must be right outside of... Uh, <laughs> It looks like Vienna, but they pronounce it Vienna. Uh, man, this might be Golden Peanut here, which is a huge uh, peanut company. But there's a lot of stuff. This is a massive uh, industrial park right out here. All right, let's go. Another very large industry here as well. Looks like a pulp mill, judging by the cars and the big pile of pulp sitting there. Uh, they've got a big wash. Uh deal over there or where they clean it or whatnot clean it up uh it's definitely looks like a, a paper shipping company you got the uh the big boy boxies over here on the uh ramp yeah must be what it what that is i ha honestly have no clue what this is either i thought i knew um most everything along this area so i am definitely most pleasantly surprised and uh this ain't too far from uh those three or four uh, spurs back down in there at that other industry. We've got another big industry here just outside of, uh, of that area. Man, I don't know what this is either, but it's very, very large. Interesting. There's another spur over here. Goes back in there. Okay. Very nice. Some uh, some surprise industries. Uh, something else you can also tell is the scenery is indeed changing a little bit. The clay is getting a little more red in some spots. Uh, it is a bit more hilly. It's kind of gone from that South Georgia uh, pine tree look, if you will, which is, uh, you know, most present everywhere. Uh, we've got another place right here. Jeez Louise. I don't know what this is either. Another paper product manufacturer. Wow. More stuff. Two spurs there. Another Napa Auto Parts. Looks like we got another bungalow missing textures. So that must be one and the same there. Oh, and there's another one right down there. Uh, let's see. This has got to be... This has got to be Vienna or Vienna which would be uh, just in the middle on the far right side about the, the Ross area there, I think. Ah, it is, Vienna, Vienna Oil Co. Well, I'll be damned. I didn't realize all this stuff was here. I don't know if it's uh, here anymore. Oh, uh, we got the Okie Finoki Swamp billboard up there with the seed live baby gators. I guess uh, people used to just suck that stuff up back in the day. I don't know if they do so much anymore. Uh, but again, this place looks very nice. Look at these pipes running along here. That has got to be new. I don't recall seeing that before. These tanks look very nice. Wow. 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 It's definitely getting a lot more hilly. The grass is starting to look a little bit different. The clay is getting more red -er. And uh, it's changing. Scenery's changing. 
I just had to stop and uh, appreciate this scene here. You can definitely tell it's getting a bit hilly and just a mixture of, of fields, different types of fields, and just the, the checkerboard or patternness of, of the land itself. Uh, this looks really fantastic. So the scenery is most definitely changing. We are definitely getting farther up north. This is just a, uh, a very nice laid out, just middle of nowhere, nothing road, dirt road crossing. Found another big facility back here that, uh, again, I have no clue what it is. Seems to be some sort of agriculture, something or other. Uh, it is way off the main line. I just happened to cross it. I have no clue as to what it actually is. And there's actually another little small spur back here, I think. Yeah, here it is here. With uh, another loading dock as well. This looks really, really nice. This most definitely has a different tone overall to, uh, to Waycross and, you know, Eastern Florida on the A-Line. This does look different, and it looks very, very good. Here we've got the Flint River, which is most definitely one of the largest rivers in the state of Georgia that runs through the state of Georgia on the, uh, let's say, the more western side of the state. Uh, but these bridge assets alone look quite nice and new as well. I don't remember those kind of pylons, the I-beam like that. Those look very good. And yes, uh, you're not deceiving your eyes. These are two tracks. So this this upper track here is actually the Norfolk Southern uh geez albany district i think it is they got the macon district and cordell and i think this one's the albany district and then the farther bridge you see down there is the uh, csx uh fitzgerald sub this is where the two cross of course the fitzgerald sub which is running uh left and right of screen and then the norfolk southern albany district runs uh Geez, now I'm getting mixed up. Let's try that again. <laughs> All right, this is the CSX Fitzgerald sub running north and south. And then this is the Norfolk Southern Albany District uh, running that away. And then we got a couple of uh, probably a little office of some sort, uh, maybe road crews, something like that, signal crews, I don't know what, uh, with a couple engines sitting there as well. And uh, a, a fairly decent size um yard right here as well for whatever the the heck and heck um they use it for but i think the next town up here is uh, oglethorpe so yeah we're just now outside of uh oglethorpe and look at the land the rolling hills in the distance i think high rail captured that fairly well i mean you're getting close to uh elevation headed up this way through georgia uh, but anyway, what I think this is, or what it should be, is uh, Tyson Foods, which is a feed mill uh, for the chicken company. So this is where you bring in all the feed to feed the chickens that uh, end up on your dinner plate uh, at some point thereafter. So again, it is a fairly, fairly large facility. They do take a lot of hoppers. Uh, and we got a nice looking damn model here as well. Man, these these buildings look super fresh. I, uh, I feel like I'm in a, another train sim uh, at the moment looking at stuff like this. This looks very good. Very, very good. Looks like we got a uh, another end of the spur there. There we go. Yep. Shove cars back in there if necessary. Got a mixture of uh, tarmac and dirt road, which is, uh, you know, you'll find all too often and in places like this but man the scenery looks totally different just think back to the extreme southeast georgia to uh, pretty much you know central western georgia where we're 
just about at now. We're not, we're not too far from uh, Manchester, which is about where the route ends. And you can also see as well. So what I was talking about when Jason from High Rail was mentioning that the, the reason he did the kind of blurring effect of the textures you can see in the cutting just dead center of the screen right there with the land down onto the road, etc. Normally that would be extremely sharp. It would almost cut your eyeball looking at it. Uh, the effect that he used and the more that I, you know, dote around the CSX uh, Fitzgerald sub, I see why he did it and it makes total sense uh, because that looks very good. You don't see... Uh, topography like that or geography within run eight very often that's not just you know flat so that looks uh, pretty incredible now we're just a bit uh, further north from the chicken feed mill and this is southern wood supply again I think it's part of that same company it's got a lot of places around here but uh, it's uh, you know milled chips and uh, and things like that. You can obviously tell with the big chip gun sitting there ready to go. So that's right off the line. You look straight down there. That goes right down uh, to the main line there. Look at this. Just how nice. I had to stop and appreciate this. The main line is just there about center screen uh, on the horizon. About midway. But uh, with the sun setting. And I have the set to live weather as well. And this looks really incredible the hilly countryside and the grass this pond here uh it's just a totally totally different look like what i was talking about from the uh, beginning of the video of just you know essentially flat uh farmland All right, don't be fooled. I have crossed over many, many miles getting to where we're currently at uh, because, A, you know, I want to leave it for some of you to discover on your own if you do decide to purchase this for Run 8, but, B, this would be like a five-hour video uh, looking at every single uh, little thing, but one of the very, very large points on this map, as with, uh, you know, core deal and the like uh is this this is outside of junction city georgia and uh it's all there's a lot of stuff around here so there's junction city mining uh and this right here i believe is the martin marietta uh junction city quarry um which uh is a fairly fairly large aggregate mine it's both sides there's i want to say one of these places has got like a massive balloon uh loop around one of them you can definitely see some uh some gravel cars sitting up in there doing uh, as they should. You got the little office over here and the cross bucks. And it all just looks really, really good and really, really clean. Is, uh, you know, is pretty much the norm for anything that's uh, high rail now. It just looks very, very excellent. All right, let's keep on going. I didn't want to skip over this. This is a bit... Uh, more north and it is obviously a Y or turnaround same deal uh, Junction City uh, quarry got more cars sitting here and uh, again I think that is new some of this stuff is most definitely new it's hard to tell um, what all is really new or what's been touched up but this stuff looks good man that's as far as that goes but you can definitely tell it's a it's a quarry and Martin Marietta is a massive company. They've got mines all over the place like this. See if I can see anything. Uh, and they definitely use rail uh, transportation as a, uh, a major means of moving uh, their product to and fro. Other little bits like this may pass you by. This is definitely a railroad bridge from the days of yore. 
It's got the clearance of 14 feet and 10 inches on there. Atlantic Coastline Railroad, uh, old beam bridge there. Uh, we're not too far from the crossover from the, uh, what is it, the Norfolk Southern uh, Columbus District. So we're just north of Junction City now. Oh my God, I'm in Fulmer heaven. We got another one. Atlantic Coastline Bridge, complete with uh, Ivy and Kudzu uh, on both sides in that Georgia red clay. The Columbus uh, area and this whole area in like central western Georgia is gorgeous. And uh, this, it's uh, it's coming in clutch. It's it's doing it like uh, you would expect it to be done. It it looks very similar. Here we go. Just north of that bridge is another part of this mine. I want to say this one's Martin Marietta as well. So that's the main line there. And this is heading north or west in railroad terms. You can definitely tell the uh, the horizon's getting a lot more hilly. Uh, but this is a big arse quarry. And it's got three lines all the way around it. Uh, they definitely do work up in here. Um... So there's a lot of stuff that you can uh, haul in and out of here for sure. Another one here as well. These are the big ones. The ones down south I thought were these. These are the big boys here. So I got to get up real high in there so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, big work. Uh, big work in this area. So the track off to the left, that's the main line. Fitzgerald Sub, that's headed uh, south or east. And then behind us is north and uh, Manchester and again ginormous friggin quarry here uh, complete with loaders and uh, just all kinds of stuff all over the map there's they got a ton of track I'm gonna get lost back in here they got so much track back in here in these mines uh, I'm certain one of them loops all the way around it just might not have been laid down either that or I just went right over it and didn't see it or something or other but uh, there we go. All right. I want to get lost. Then we're back Oop, underground. Mole man. Now we're back. And this looks good, too. Just coming across this real, real quick. Look how nicely the uh, the gravel blends in to the rail bed and uh, drops down off into the side, just off the side of the, uh, the right-of-way there. That looks good. That looks very, very good. This, of course, is one of the fancy little uh, overtop bridges on the route, which, look, damn good again all this ivy everywhere in the grass growing up it's just it's so friggin cozy i can't get over it it looks amazing uh quite hilly out here not quite mountainous um but but you get the picture i hope and that's very very cool another big old stonking bridge i don't know what this is this is either buck creek sand creek or cedar creek or none of them this might actually be the uh there's no way did i pass the norfolk southern columbus district i might have this might actually be the uh what is it colahatchee creek i'm st i'm starting to lose the heck where i'm at but this bridge looks mega this thing looks very nice Worn, wrought iron, riveted, bolted. This looks amazing. Good damn looking bridge. Very high as well off that creek bed there. That's the highway over there. Man, I'll tell you what, if the scenery, uh, if there's scenery that changes as much on any other run eight, 
the map. I don't know what, but this looks uh, this looks very good, and this is one of the several gaps that uh, are in the area. I think this may be Stevenson Gap, which is typically the easiest route uh, between you know areas, uh, so to speak, mountain passes, kind of. This is almost North Georgia here, so uh, you know easiest. Easiest grade, essentially, but there's three gaps. There's Stevenson Gap, Dunn Gap, and uh, Milan Gap, or Milling Gap. And then uh, we are not too far from Manchester now. Got us a better uh, bird's eye view here. So that's one of the gaps. I don't know exactly which one. It's hard to tell, not being an extreme central or north Georgia native. There goes that Danny Harmon uh, CSX. <laughs> defect detector again but look at the view man holy hell this looks absolutely amazing that's the cut right there there's actually a deep uh, a deep bit that cuts through that red clay and it loops uh, i'll get a little bit higher here so when you get up towards uh, manchester up here probably about oh last 30 miles or so it it does a lot of snaking uh around the mountains here and uh it's it's just scenic as all get out. So this is the beginning of Manchester. It gets a little funky, so I'm going to record the whole thing. Uh, we got some stuff going on down here. Some more doll armage. Very, very nice searchlight action. Got a sign here. What's it say? Welcome to Manchester Sub. When in doubt, shift F5. <laughs> uh, I see the, uh, the mile, mile boards down there, mile posts. Uh, pretty good sized yard through here. It still curves through these hills pretty good. It's almost like uh, Eastern PA, if you will, the way it uh, streaks through these uh, these big hills. Got us a new truck there. That looks brand new. Very nice. Haven't seen that yet. Here's the tower or the office for CSX Manchester. Very good. Got the overpass there, and this is where it splits up. We got another sign here. Look around, getting down. Let's see what's uh, draped over the top there. That's pretty cool. So this, I'll go to the the uh, dispatch board. So Manchester Yards to the left through New Way and Childs, and then it continues on down the Lionville Sub, and then to the right is Manchester Sub, uh, which continues up to Hot Lantern. Let's see if we can figure this out. It is super confusing to me. I can't, uh, I can't figure it out. Some more nice bungalows there. Some more ivy. Another good looking bridge. Heck yeah! It says Seaboard on there. There we go. Seaboard Airline. I will take it. That's gorgeous. Got another bridge over here with the SCL. Oh, that's nice. It's uh, I don't know if it's like that in real life, but it's draped off the model there a little bit. I don't know if it needs to be shrunk a tad or if it actually genuinely looks like that. That one looks much better. It's uh, raised up a bit higher, so we'll get up in the air and see what we can figure out here. So, yeah, that's got to be the lineville uh, off to the left there, and then this to the right. Uh, has got to be, jeez, where am I at? No, that's not right. Or is it? Yes. No. I don't know. Man, I'm so confused. So what I'm going to do is click on stuff. All right, where am I at? <laughs> where am I at? That doesn't help me at all. That does not help me at all. There's, a, there's also a uh, rail fan platform in Manchester as well. I'm assuming that's not going to be put in here. Uh, so this is the lineful sub to Birmingham. That's in Alabama, for those unaware. Uh, so sun setting, so that's west. Uh, this is east, so we'll head this way. Got another nice, very nice looking bridge with the kudzu and all that good stuff. Man, this country up here in terrain is gorgeous. Uh, let's see. Man, this confuses the heck out of me. These two lines that merge together like this. It's, uh, it's just too much for my smooth brain. 
Very too much for my smooth brain. This all looks really darn good back in here, though. And geez, if this isn't longer uh, than I thought it was going to be. I can see Manchester up there. I see the uh, water tower. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there's the siding. That way to the Fitzy. And then uh, that way around the bend to Hotlanta. Old growing over track here, whatever the hell they used to do with it, is beyond me. Ooh, this looks nice as well. See how far up we can go here. This is effectively the end of the line. We'll see how far we can go. Quite a darn ways. Holy crap. So uh, you could definitely hop in the, uh, the fun seat from a train coming out of Atlanta and uh, ride down. Cheese and crackers. All right, that's a lot more than I thought it was going to be because there's, uh, there's still assets and scenery up here. Another big couple of sightings in a Poogly Woogly. Holy crap, is this like a whole brand new route? All right, that's, yeah, that's Atlanta that way. So we'll go back to Manchester again. All right, forgive my zooming around here. I'm still trying to get my bearings. This is so darn confusing, the way the, uh, the line splits up here. I need, like, some visual references, because I'm trying to figure out where the, uh, the little rail fan spot is. I think it's by the town here. I want to say it's by the little town here and the bridge, because I've, I've seen some video of it. Um... But yeah, I you know yeah this was a long video, but there's a lot to look at and look at that ridge. That's gorgeous. I love mountainous terrain like that. Um, but that's that's about as much as I can uh, as I can think of to show off what is obviously now to me a very beautiful and worth every penny uh, CSX Fitzgerald sub for run eight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Found it somewhat informative. Uh, just looking around, seeing what you could do, kind of industries, what the terrain was like, uh, and all that good stuff. And just a general uh, look at the map. Um, but yeah, that's it. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.